welcome to this special edition of uh, D Camp with D. Tonight we have something really, really, really good for you in store. Because of popular demand, I'm gonna show you tonight my 1200 bottle seller in the west wing of the house. Okay, I am your host. I am Dietmar Ostermann, the regular guy from Long Island. Please follow me along. Welcome to my wine cellar. It's a cellar of about 1200 bottles. It's 10 feet long, about five, six feet wide and 15 feet tall. Now let me give you a lay of the land of the individual sections of the wine cellar. Come on in a little bit. Okay, see here, all these display shelves. These are my Cabernet Sauvignons. And then underneath the display shelves are the same bottles more off. We are starting here on the right hand side with the Turnbull Reserve. Over here are various years of the Cabernet, of the Camus Cabernet Sauvignon. Here, for instance, is the 40th anniversary from 2012, one of my favorites of the Camus. Let's move along over here. The LACMAP is uh, another excellent Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. You move a little bit further down, for instance, right here, the Spring Mountain Napa Valley Cabernet, an excellent choice as well. The 2015 year was particularly good. And then here, at the towards the end, is one of my all-time favorites. This is the Joseph Phelps Insignia. It's a high-end wine of Joseph Phelps. Joseph Phelps is the Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa that we reviewed in one of my previous tastings, but we didn't go high-end to the Insignia. 2012 was rated, I believe, 96 points in the Wine Spectator. Now, coming back here to the higher sections, on the very right-hand side, these are the champagnes. For instance, here you see a Dom Perignon 2009 vintage. Over here are Argentinian Malbecs, as well as some Chilean Cabernets. And then to the left in the supper section are all my Chardonnay. So here is, for instance, my bread and butter Candle Jackson Chardonnay, or a little bit more high end over here, the Rumbauer Chardonnay. And then towards the other side, things are repeating itself. These display shelves are all the shelves for the Cabernet Sauvignon. So for instance, over here is the Maestro from Robert Mondavi. This is a blended Cabernet Merlot, Cabernet Franc, and a couple of other grapes in there. The Farniente, which is the sister wine of Nickel and Nickel. Down here are a few more Nickel and Nickels. This is for instance, a 2017 State Ranch. Here's a legendary Cabernet. This is the Stack Sleep Wine Cellars. You may recall that uh, Stack Sleep was the phenomenal Napa Valley Vineyard that won the 1976 Paris Tasting and uh, basically dusted off all the French Bordeaux in this competitive tasting and really brought Napa Valley on the international wine map. This wine, named after my youngest son, Björn, Coincidentally, of course. Here's another favorite of mine. We discussed it briefly in one of my other videos. This is the Cliff Lady, but the high-end Beckstorfer to Cologne Vineyard 2016. Uh, 96 points in um, the Wine Spectator. And then let's just go back to this whole entire assembly above. Over here this whole entire row are all Chianti's. So for instance, right here is one of my favorite Chianti vineyards, um, Felsina, Chianti Classico Reserva. 2013 was an excellent year in Chianti. Uh, or over here 
is the Il Guigio. It's from the San Felice Vineyard, which also has a Relay and Chateau Hotel associated with it. 2013, excellent year in Chianti. Above over here are the um, uh, Brunels. This is the Barbie 2012 Brunello di Montalcino. In the uh, whole entire shelf rack above this are the Barolos. Let's just fetch one of those bottles. This, for instance, is the Tresuri, uh, an all-time favorite Barolo of mine, 2014, still a little bit young. It was highly, highly recommended by the uh, section executive of uh, Total Wine's Italian section. And then um, over here in the middle, we have some of these uh, Magnum bottles. Magnum means uh, really two wine bottles, one and a half liter. This happens to be a Chateau Neuf de Pop. Telegraph is a favorite of my wife's. Above those is the Prisoner. Prisoner is Orange Swift, a boutique wine from uh, California. And then see the cellar goes um, for another many, many feet up in the air. Above all my Barolos, the third rack here, are the Barberas from uh, Piedmont region. And above the Barberas, the last two racks are young Cabernets that still need to be for about two years in the cellar before you can even think about drinking them. And at that point in time, I'm moving them down. There is no wine video without a tasting. This happens to be the 2015 Austin Hope. Austin Hope is a Paso Robles Cabernet as opposed to a uh, Napa or Sonoma Valley Cabernet. So let's open this baby up. Okay, I have my special Italian equipment that my viewers may know from previous shows. It works without fail. Okay. In the glass, a nice good pour. Beautiful color, ruby red, shaking it around. Some nice legs. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Deep fruit. Some mixture of red fruit and black fruit. There's cherry in here, some blackberry, some black currant. 2015 was an excellent year for the uh, Austin Hope. Let's give it a whirl. Deep fruit, very, very pleasant in the palate. Nice. No more tannins, adjusted beautifully. It's at its prime drinking time. 2015 needs to be open right now. And uh, was scoring very high in Wine Spectator. I think it's a Vivino 4.4 wine. Let me try it again. Blackberry in the finish, long finish. It's a beautiful Cabernet, and the best of it is, it is about a $35 to $40 bottle, so very recommendable. Friends, that is it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed the view of my cellar, and until further notice, I see you at the next tasting. And please continue to watch my channel on YouTube, and also follow me on Vivino. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe. Thank you very much.